Thank you so much for watching. In the past week, or the past week, this hasn't taken me a week, but uh, in the past week, I have actually put together this Element RC Gatekeeper. Now, this is a super badass, uh, really performance oriented crawler slash rock racer. If you wonder what this thing is about completely, and then please go check out the link in the video description box. I will make sure that there is a, a link to the video in which I unbox this thing. Perhaps I even get a chance to run it. I'm actually shooting this video ahead of me shooting the unboxing of this Element RC Gatekeeper truck. So that's how excited I actually am uh, about getting this thing finished paint-wise. Um, a really important thing, a really important part of painting is always uh, to hang on to your scraps. That's also exactly what I've done here. Uh, and I do that in order to, uh, to test some colors. It is always a great idea to actually have some, uh, some of the material laying around that you want to paint. So whether that be a hard body or whatnot, uh, or in this case, a piece of Lexan. It is great to test some colors on it to see how it will actually turn out in a real life scenario without you messing up the actual body that you want to paint. So that's uh, also what I did over here. This is actually some cutoff material from the Element RC Gatekeeper body panels uh, that come with the truck. You do need to cut all that stuff out yourself. That's also how you end up with these scraps, of course. So over here, you see uh, the body panels. These go on the sides. This is actually the roof. Then there is also an interior panel. There's a hood and uh, then the other side, which of course is all fine. But seeing that this is such a nice canvas to actually get creative on, uh, this gatekeeper, it offers a full cage. And uh, seeing that I had a couple of bodies laying around, I really wanted to try my hand at something else. And that's when I came to the conclusion that I still had a Chevy Colorado body laying around that I had not used yet. This is a Proline body shell, which is heavily modified. I don't have any of the pieces that I cut off from it anymore. But as you can tell, I cut uh, the front off uh, pretty drastically. So the, the front bumper came off. I also cut out some of the grill pieces. I cut out the side windows entirely. And I cut off the entire back section of this uh, truck body just in order to fit it on this Element RC Gatekeeper cage. Um, that all went pretty successfully. How this works is you basically take a coffee, you eyeball it, and then you just start winging it with a, a blade, snapping stuff off, sanding it as you go, and making sure that it fits before you start masking it up any further. What I did over here is I put some, uh, some logos on it. So there's an Element RC logo on it. There's also uh, an Associated Electrics logo on the hood. Then there is a Gatekeeper Suspension logo on the roof. And there are some uh, Hemistorm logos on the sides. And I always do that by uh, putting the logos in Photoshop and then uh, flipping them horizontally. So I end up with something that is printed in reverse. Then I stick the printed side. This is where it gets perhaps a bit complicated for some. I stick the printed side to the outside of the body, like such. So that way, if you look through the paper, sort of, it reads correct. Then on the inside, you have your masking tape. Then you put this down on the lamp. You turn that lamp on, like such. And then you just start tracing the lines that you can see through uh, the paper through your masking tape. You start tracing those with a blade, cutting everything out, making sure that you actually hit every single line uh, before taking the paper off on the outside and double checking that you have actually scored everything and that everything is completely cut before uh, moving on to actually painting the body. Now what I always do is I do make sure before I mask anything that everything is properly cleaned and degreased. Uh, so we use some hand soap for that, some hot water, dry it off carefully, making sure not to leave any water residue. And then you're actually ready for paint. So this is well, I'm ready for paint. You can tell that on the outside over here, there's some additional masking tape. That's just because with all the custom cut work, the clear off spray film started peeling a tiny bit. So do make sure that that's fully intact before you actually move ahead and uh, start painting. Now I'm really excited to actually get this done. There's a couple of new colors that I want to use, or new to me colors. So I want to use some uh, blue anodized aluminum. That's not a strange color to me, but to back it with like a cobalt blue or cobalt green 
Um, I will also make sure that there's a link to that in the video description box. That is actually new. Uh, I also want to use some mustard. I want to use some champagne anodized aluminum just because that's one of my favorite colors. Throw all of that together. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. Uh, use some black and some white to tone it down a bit and then just see how it ends up looking. This truck has a lot of potential. I think I'm going to have great fun with it and I just want to have that additional body shell, that additional uh, Chevy Colorado shell just to turn it into something that looks a bit more individual than just running the stock body panels. Anyway, let's uh, get to painting. Well, I'm wearing my mask, of course, because we're in the middle of a paint Um As you can tell, there's a lot of color going on uh, already. It looks really simple, and it actually it is. Um, if you uh, have, for example, an anodized color that you can that you can throw up in front, or like a metallic color, and you back that with something that is like more or less in the same color range, you can actually get like some ghosted logo effect like I achieved over here in the front, which I think is really cool. Now, um, I do have a couple of colors going on already. The, one of them is a blue anodized aluminum. One of them is champagne anodized aluminum. One of them is cobalt green. They actually call it a green. I would call it a cobalt blue, but whatever. Uh, so, but to me, a cobalt green. I have that mustard color going on and then I backed everything with a white just because I know that my next color is going to be a black. Usually you would start your paint job out with a black, but since this is uh, kind of like winging it, uh, we're starting with some color for the background and after that we're going to go with the black. Now to protect the, uh, the vibrance of the color, I do want to back it with a white, so that's also what I did. But of course you do end up with uh, quite a few layers of paint. Um, now. What you can do to avoid that is you actually take a piece of tape. So I got my two inch wide 3M tape. In case you wonder what I actually use, it is uh, this. I got tons of this stuff. I buy this at a paint store in Holland every time I uh, go back to, uh, to visit my dad. And what you do is you just take a strip of this, uh, of this tape. And then you go to the area that is actually covered with paint. And you simply press it on. You do make sure not to uh, tear any of the masking out. But if you just sort of like to press it down, rip it off a couple of times. This is what, uh, what actually happens. The paint comes off the, 
the masking tape that you actually have stuck to the body and it reveals all of your cut lines so it makes it way easier to weed your tape out afterwards. So everything that you have already cut will appear way clearer if you just uh, make sure that you rip some of the paint off. This is of course one of the downsides of painting with the aerosol cans like I do. Instead of with an airbrush you use way more uh, paint and you also have a way thicker layer of paint to sort of like deal with at some uh, stage. So uh, this is one of the tricks to actually deal with that uh, excess paint. What I'll be doing right now is I'm going to weed all of this stuff out until it looks like this. So you can tell that uh, that logo is uh, kind of appearing right now. After that we will weed the last of the lettering out and spray that white. So we're going to go black first, after that we're going to do a white. And then we will see what uh, maybe on the outside we want to accentuate with some uh, flat clear. Let's go! It is time for me to start cleaning up over here because there's like tiny bits of masking tape, bags and tools absolutely everywhere. Um, this Chevrolet Colorado body is made by Proline Racing. If you want to customize a body just to see if it would fit on a truck like I did for example over here on this Element RC Gatekeeper. Just, I don't know, eyeball it a tiny bit, wing it. Um, just start chopping away and see what you can actually do. Don't chop away too much uh, immediately but just uh, take it like one step at a time and see how it actually turns out and if you can get it to fit and, and bolt it down, tighten it and all that. This Element RC Gatekeeper is a very fun cage to actually start some customizations on. I hope that this uh, Chevrolet Colorado body actually shows that. These wheels and tires are also by Proline Racing. If you want to have a 10% discount in the ProLine Racing web store, use the code HEMISTORM10 or HEMI10 
uh, before you check out your order as a discount code. That way you get an immediate 10% discount and I hope you will put that to some good use. You don't even need to watch these videos so you can also just hand that code out to your friends and your RC buddies that you meet out on the trails. Um, well, I hope this gives you a bit of an idea on how you can ghost logos in. So using uh, some of those aluminum anodized colors by Tamiya, I think it gives a great amount of opportunity to actually do something that looks a bit different. So over here I use that blue anodized aluminum over the top, then a champagne anodized aluminum in the bottom. Backed everything with a cobalt green, a color that I would personally call cobalt blue. Uh, some mustard, some black, some white, uh, and some flat clear over the top. And you end up with something that looks like this. I will now put an ESC in this thing and a receiver, take it out and actually get it dirty because I'm really giddy to see what this Element RC Gatekeeper can actually do out on the trails. It is very much a performance oriented truck with those uh, trailing arms, a solid front and rear axle, and it all just feels very stout. So. I'll be doing that. I hope that you will subscribe if you haven't already. If you are subscribed, make sure that you hit the notifications bell. That way you get an email notification the minute I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments box. And if you enjoyed this video, of course, don't forget to hit the like button before you leave because that is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. Um, again, truly appreciate it. Stay safe and uh, have fun with your RCs. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.